Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle here with you watching a pretty nasty storm on the south side of Oklahoma City. Uh, moving into the uh, Norman and Moore area here soon, also Noble, right now going over Blanchard. So this is a look at the radar right now. And it is a heck of a hailstorm, and it is just now coming into an environment where it's going to cross over what was rem remnants of the old cold front boundary. So we'll have to see if it does anything with that as far as tornado production goes. But for now, it's just a big hailstorm. Uh, hail sizes have come around an, uh, an inch and three quarters, so basically golf ball size hail has been reported with this one. Also, wind speeds in excess of 75 miles per hour. So those are two of the strong conditions within this particular storm. It's rolling through Newcastle right now, just passed here on the latest update, so it'll be coming in a Norman here in just a few minutes. Uh, the, the weaker stuff will be up around the moor, so you guys won't get much of it, but Norman is going to fare the brunt of both the wind and the hail coming out of this. Um, let's see, right now there's convergence line on the uh, velocity data, so it's nothing that's out of control. Um, let's see, but it is, let's see, these little blue areas here that just picked up, those are winds of around 80 miles per hour. Um, so that's going to do a little bit of damage, sometimes as much as a uh, cold front would do. So add, uh, just kind of keep that in mind of, uh, of a weak tornado, I should say. So in other words, 80 miles per hour is I'm like having an EF0 tornado. So it can do a lot of damage, straight line winds. And that's coming on in to the Norman area just from due west to town. So it'll, it'll be coming up on 35 here momentarily. I'm going to have to use different radar views here. Also, and to keep in mind, the, um, the hail algorithms, this little yellow area stands for giant hail. So the hail algorithms can get a little, little excited. They're triggering. I did see a, looks like a new golf ball, or no, a, a bigger report, 2.75 inches. So there you go. So that validates the giant hail algorithm. So we're talking about some near baseball size hail coming down here on the south side of Oklahoma City. This is one of those high magnitude storm events uh, that's going to be a, a problem for you guys uh, on the south side of town. Uh, this does not affect the rest of Oklahoma City itself. The, um, that's looking fine at this point in time. Uh, I'll back out a little bit so you can see we're just focused on this one storm here in the south end of town. Uh, elsewhere over the state, uh, flip this back over, we've got um, some light rain to the north, east, uh, south, way east looks like a train warning has been issued. Uh, for you guys out here east at McCurtain, uh, heading up toward Fort south of Fort Smith on the Arkansas border. So we can get to that here in a minute. Uh, first off, I'm going to finish up what's going on here. This is the biggest uh, story here in Oklahoma City as far as uh, storms in this whole two-day period. And it's this big hail-producing monster right here. Let's take a look upstairs. Uh, let's see here. So upstairs, this is looking at up to about 10,000 feet. Uh, radar reflectivity is up around 70 dBZ. So that's going to be some pretty good monster hail over a large swath of an area. It's not just one course, like an elongated course. A very strange overall uh, storm structure to it. But needless to say, it's like a wall of wind with a wall of hail. And that's wind-driven hail, which even adds more insult to injury. So let's get you to a couple things I'm going to do here for you. Okay, so first off, uh, other than the fact it's got 80 mile per hour winds with it, uh, it is moving due east. Uh, again, this is on the south side of Oklahoma City, so it's not going to be around the rest of the metro as far as the concern goes. Moving east at 60 miles per hour, uh, hailed to 2.75 inches and carrying winds around 80 miles per hour. As we talked about right now, it's going through the more uh, south more and then now heading into the Norman area. We're going to put a few of these uh, roads on here. So we'll get down a little deeper into the weeds on the road network so we can tell you who's going to get the heaviest, uh, largest hail. So 24th um, Avenue, let's see, West Tecumseh Road, right now is getting the heaviest hail. Moorgate, if your street pops up here, it says I-35, right here, okay, so west of town, west of uh, Norman and, and uh, Moore. So Kingsland Drive, all this little entire neighborhood around here between... Um, as a Tecumseh, and then on the east-west road, we've got, oh my goodness, there's Carrington, Loring's, Buckingham, Brownwood. If I come down here a little bit more, we got West Rock Creek Road, uh, Robinson Street. Um, so the kind of continues the hail core down across the river at that point. 
then it kind of trails off here on the road networks, of course. But right now, Tecumseh Road looks like it's got the heaviest, largest. You can tell by that because it's got the white area in the radar imagery. So that white area indicates where the strongest or uh, returns are on the radar for the power return. So it also is, um, works out with hail, so they're usually the biggest hail size. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the wind calculations. Let's see here. So bear with me here for a second. Popping up some different products. I'm going to stop at one that uh, I want to talk about. The mesh size hail. So this entire algorithm here in purple is indicative hail up to potentially three inches in diameter. Uh, let's see, there's some here. I see a yellow. That's up to four inches in diameter. So that would be uh, ridiculously, and, you know, we're talking almost grapefruit size hail um, within the part of the storms. What the algorithms are predicting, in other words, that can come out of this. Uh, we have seen 2.75 inches, so that's plenty for me. But if it's saying it can go up to three and a half, then it can go up to three and a half. So this is a big hailstorm here for the southern part of Oklahoma City. Anyway, so that is the mean estimated hail size in that area. All right, wind speeds, I don't see anything too out of control in this one. Um, this panel on the other radar we did, I'm gonna look back at it here in a second. Uh, I just wanna take a look here. It looks like the weather service kind of put out a new warning uh, for this storm. It's a very short boxed warning. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's just updated. So 854. Um, okay, they canceled the western part of it. That's why, because it's moving so fast. Tennis ball size hail and 70 mile per hour wind gusts are in the warning criteria. This is southern Oklahoma City, uh, north uh, western Norman, uh, Moore, Newcastle, Noble, and Goldsby. So those are all the communities involved, uh, of course, now for the next uh, few minutes until it moves east of your area. So right now it's kind of blasting through. Take a look at the wind field here from the radar site. This is the experimental radar down here in Norman. These little blue areas are 76 miles per hour. So that's where they say wind speeds up to around 70 or 80. Uh, right now it's what the radar is detecting just off the surface there uh, as the storm rolls on in. And that's just within a stone's throw. So that's a pretty accurate reading to be that close to the radar. It's measuring at near surface level around 50 feet elevation. So you're going to get a little patch of wind here. And the worst patch of that wind is going right over the airport, uh, by the way. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let, uh, let's see here. Um, so it's a split off of 9 and 35. And then looks like the weather service drew another polygon. Oh, that's the percentage of a possible tornado. It's only at 3%. That's what that came up. So uh, we're okay there. All right. So 77 jots here to the east. So the biggest winds will be north of there, north of that little jot. So when 77 turns back to the north, those are the strongest winds are gonna move in with this particular uh, severe thunderstorm. Uh, let's see, we can take a look at hail sizes. It's not there, but let's go with CC. So in this particular case, I think I'm gonna have to go uh, switch radar views because it's, it's on top of the radar, so it's a little close. but uh, what it does tell me, and that's what I'm going to draw it here for you, this, this entire area here where you see red, uh, when I flip over to the uh, ZDR values, it drops down to around zero or some places below. So that indicates a widespread hail. And when I go to cross-correlation coefficient, these numbers drop off into the blue, which is in the 70 percentile chain, uh, area. Again, it indicates hail size is greater than two inches when both of those are combined. So that kind of validates the uh, 2.75 inch uh, totals earlier that we saw southwest of Newcastle. So this is a really nasty thunderstorm moving through the Norman area. So we we'll probably get some brief flash flooding and uh, like I said, some pretty nasty hail. Okay, hail size on this for the algorithms, still indicating GH, that stands for giant hail. This is just basically one really nasty hailstorm. It does have a TVS in it. In other words, there is some type of mid-level rotation, but at the lowest levels, that's what we're gonna have to see if that develops. Now, the best potential to watch for that, uh, as far as the storm itself, is gonna be this area down here around Goldsby. Uh, that'll be the spot that we would watch for the developing tornado. So for you guys in Goldsby and Noble, 
uh, South Norman, just kind of keep a heads up for a little bit. We'll just see what happens. It's going over that zone now. Probability of a tornado is only at 5%, so it didn't increase much. It was at 1% a minute ago. Uh, but it is getting to an environment where it's picking up winds that are changing direction. So if I show you the Oklahoma Mesonite here, the actual storm is going right here into this area into an easterly wind because it's feeding in from the Mesonite site. Uh, but it's, it's getting out of what it was a north wind. In other words, this was developed way out here behind the cold front and has been moving in the cold air all night long. It's been a big hail maker, wind maker. And now it's getting in here. This is where the frontal boundary lies. Now, thank goodness this boundary is so diffuse. So there's very little vorticity along it, very little convergence, and that's a good thing. The bad thing is there's still something there. There's little tiny little boundaries in this region that the storm is going to ingest into the updraft. That is what we have to watch to see if it might produce a tornado out of that. Looking at the uh, worn-on forecast for this event, it does pick up on this supercell storm going through South Oklahoma City. Did a pretty good job at that, moving through the south side of town. Uh, and you can see this is around, uh, let's see, so 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. And then it, it dies out. It has it dying out once it gets a little bit more east of town, say um, east of the Tinker area, the split on uh, 40. Uh, that's when it starts to, um, to kind of lessen intensity. So we'll see if this short-term high-range forecast uh, pans out and is correct, because uh, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, another view here on the experimental radar down here south of Norman from the guys at OU. So watching this storm moving in that area. And with this one, I can't do much with it because it's just what you can view online. But uh, it's needless to say, it's another radar view for me to look down on that part of the, uh, of the city. Okay, so let me see what else. Let's go with, uh, let's just go back to the radar. Okay. So we've got this heavy storm moving through. There's another report of so some golf ball size hail, uh, just about just under one, one and a half inch in diameter. Uh, so there's 1.5, 1.25. These are ping reports it looks like. Uh, then if we head down here on the south end, there's another two and a half inch from the National Weather Service employee. He estimated two to three inch size hail. Um, let's see here, this was, give me a street. Oh, I know what I need to do. Hold on just a second. Okay, so that was around West Main Street and 48th Avenue. So that's where that hail report came in of the giant hail. So the biggest hailstones now passing through Norman currently, especially the northeast side of Norman, you see this pink area. Uh, that's on the southeast side of Moore. So between the two, you guys have got the heaviest hail at that point in time. Uh, let's take a look at the winds uh, now that it's crossed over the radar to the other end. The pink area, uh, these are all winds in Norman proper around 50, looks like to 58 miles per hour. Um, and not as strong with the winds with the hail core that's north and east of town, north of Hall Park. Okay, another view, different radar. So, so far, the winds are behaving right now. Um, let's see here. Don't see any rotation signatures or anything like that, so that's good. So right now, it's just a really big hail maker. All right. So, we'll go back to here, Norman. So, now it's moving past 77, it's about Two miles east there for the heavy hill core. There's 36th Street Avenue um, in that particular case. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, Hall Park. That's the East, east Creek Road. East Rock Creek Road is, is getting in some of the hail now. 24th Avenue Northeast. Uh, let's see here. So uh, you guys here on the east side of Norman, the uh, northeast side of Norman is going to get the worst of it. The rest of it, the hail sizes have come down, but you can see a bunch. These little white spots on the map that's all 1.75 1 to 2 inch size hailstones and then you get over here on the west of 35 and you get some that are over two 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 and a half i think there's two and three quarters 
So maybe this is a sign that some of that larger hail's already dropped. Uh, there's still not as much to go, but it looks pretty dark on the reflectivity to me, which still tells me there's gonna be some big stones mixed in here. Um, so Tecumseh Road is getting it, 36th Avenue Northeast, uh, Franklin Road, you guys are getting the heavy hail. If you, if you live east of these roads, I'm calling out, you know, about a mile or two, just know you're next. Indian Hills, uh, let's go down south. Rock Creek, we did them. Uh, Robinson, East Robinson, and then it trails off at uh, Alameda Street. So that's where the tail end of the strongest or the largest hailstones would be. Um, we can take a look at some of the uh, radar estimated hail size within this. Let's see, one to one and a half to two. Okay. So maybe it's coming down a little bit. Maybe. Let's go. I have to, take a, I have to go upstairs and take a look because I don't, don't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. All right. So let's see. Probability of a tornado has, well, probability of severe hail is 98%. We know that. Uh, probability of a tornado is only 4%. So that hasn't changed any. Um, that's good, but we'll be watching this little spot here southeast of Norman. That would be the area to watch for, uh, for any ingesting of any boundary residue. And so far, I don't see it, so that's good. Uh, let's go up in elevation. There was, you know, it looks like it could be trying to get a little bit of a hook on this, but uh, remember what I told you, don't worry about hooks yet. Uh, you have to have a lot of things that happen for a uh, supercell with a hook to produce a tornado. A lot of them don't, uh, but that's the first sign that you would look for to see um, it's a monkey business. But again, it has to ingest somewhat something of that boundary because otherwise the winds are uh, five knots or so, and for low level inflow, it's that's terrible. I mean, it, tornadoes really struggle to get to going with that. So we're gonna see what happens here as we watch this. I'm surprised though uh, the four and nine cut in over the Biden speech tonight. I looked up the monitors going, well, I guess it'll just be me. <laughs> and then they started cutting in. That was actually a smart move on their end um, because they were about to lose it. Um, so it's a, I don't know what's gonna happen with that. There's a lot of rules, regulations uh, between network and uh, the local stations and what they're allowed to do and not do. So. They may just say, you know, so what? <laughs> and then just pretend like it didn't happen. Regardless, still got a heavy storm here in the Norman area. Uh, a little weaker on the west side of Norman now toward I-35, but on the east of 77 is where the money's at. And that's where you got DBZ values here into the uh, 60 plus category. Oh, that's what I was going to do aloft. Uh, now, since this storm is overhead, literally, uh, I don't know what this is going to be able to give me, but we'll take a look. Yeah, I need to go with another view. So let's do that. I'm gonna switch radar views. I'm gonna go to Twin Lakes. So if you're kind of tuning in late, like what's all the hubbub, anything else going on? Nope, everything's quiet except for just right here on the south end of town. It's a, a severe thunderstorm. It is not a tornadic storm at this point in time. Uh, if you look out here in the far eastern Oklahoma, there is an old tornado warned storm that continues. Um, the movement on this is to the east northeast, uh, and that's going to be heading over to Rock Island, Pocola, Hackett, Bonanza, and Greenwood over the next half hour. Uh, but it looks like that storm's weakened quite a bit, which is good news. Technically, though, that trade warning remains in effect just for a little while longer, for about the next uh, 15 or so minutes. So make sure you stay in your shelters out here in the far eastern Oklahoma, north of Poto, um, as you head toward the Arkansas border. All right, so back here to home, see what's happened, if anything. Okay. So the biggest storms, or the biggest hailstones, I should say, will be in this little pink and purple shaded area. And that's still over Franklin Road um, that we talked about earlier. So still hasn't changed. Over 72, 72nd Avenue looks like that was. 
Rock Creek Road, again, moving just east right along it, Tecumseh. So if you're coming up on 72nd Avenue Northeast, that's where the hill is currently. Uh, the new radar update just came in. Still watching this tail end little hook appendage down here. It's a baby one. It's not doing much of anything, so it's just an ingest point. We just got to make sure it doesn't do anything stupid with it. Uh, the best running right along Highway 9, running east. And let's see here. Let's go back to you guys. Okay, let's see if I can't get a better picture of this thing. All right, so the hill cores that are in the purple, that's the bad news one. So when you get hill cores in the purple, shading, this is 70 uh, plus DBZ. These are the ones that produce those ridiculously large hailstones. It's around 20,000 feet. Um, it did get into the growth layer for hail. So you're still going to have big hail with this is the bottom line. Um, that's what I've got for you so far. Uh, if I took off some of the other... Uh, figures and just look at just the worst of the worst cores in a three-dimensional view you can see how these all have to come down in other words these will all fall to the ground uh, once they get uh, quote tired of being held aloft in other words the stones just get too big and the wind can't keep it up there so it does come down with gravity so you're going to get a wind or a downburst um, just a downdraft of an actual cell this will come screaming back to the surface. So you guys here east of Norman, you're still gonna get this big hail, I'm afraid. And that's not going to uh, do you any favors. So you'll get a taste of what happened here in the south side of Oklahoma City between Newcastle, Blanchard, uh, Moore, and Norman, that little um, quadrant there. Okay, let's see. Okay, so. We're watching, remember that little curly Q thing right here for the ingest part? I think the National Weather Service is going to issue a tornado warning for that potential that could happen quickly. In other words, it's not there now. It may not even happen, but uh, let's see. Let's do this. They're probably just going to be to play it safe, but we're going to we're going to find it here in a second. It hasn't officially come out. Okay, so where are we now? We're still well east of Norman. Any craziness for uh, Doppler velocity data? I just don't see yet, which is good. Uh, let's keep it that way. So right now it's just just to get a heavy thunderstorm, still producing hail um, on the northern northeastern sides of. Uh, Norman, so moving out of the city district region here in a little bit. A lot of these numbers in here are coming in around an inch, inch and a half. There's a two, uh, there's a half inch, half inch. So it looks like more itself got about a half inch of, uh, or the hail size was about as big as half an inch on the uh, east and southeast side of Moore. So that's good, but it did get progressively larger just a couple miles down the road. Probability of a tornado is only 3%, so that's still on the low end for these automatic algorithms. So that's good. Let's take a look here. So they put, I know what they did, they put a tornado possible on the tag. So you see this where it says tornado possible. So in other words, so it's not gonna be a tornado warning officially. It's gonna be a tornado possible for in case this this part of the storm we talked about ingests any vorticity at the last minute because it's in that zone right now, and that would happen very quickly. So it's a, um, a wording that kind of includes that. So uh, let's see, moving to the east at 40, so let's slow down a little bit. Uh, hail up to two and a half inches in diameter. Wind speeds up around 70 miles per hour. Uh, we saw some Doppler radar estimates almost uh, about 80 at one point. Uh, was the highest I've seen. Okay, uh, let's take a look at where this guy is traveling. Okay. Let's go over here. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is the surface uh, pattern as far as like wind, wind speeds, temperatures, that kind of thing, right? So up here we've got a north wind, these little black barbs indicate a north wind. Temperatures are right around the upper 60s, low 70s behind that weak front. You can see a southwest wind here. This is behind our storm system. Um, of course, it's helping to change the winds to a southwest. You're actually out ahead of it. Um, but south of it, we do have 70 over 70, uh, meaning that uh, we do have some instability feeding in with a south and southeast direction. Uh, so it is crossing over this little weak, uh, if I were to draw the line on here, it'll be hard to see in this aspect, but it's going to be something, something about like this. That's the residual of the front. So it's it's crossing it in that zone right now. So that's why the tornado tag was there. All right, so I just had to go look at that real quick. Let's see what they said. Uh, storm still over western Norman, moving, well, it's actually over eastern Norman, moving east at uh, 45. Uh, tennis ball size hail, 70 mile per hour winds, same thing. Um, let's see here. So that was the only uh, specific wording, so that doesn't really change much. They didn't update the wording. Okay. Now, once it, it gets out of, uh, now it's getting out of the Norman area, we're going to be heading toward Pink, Bethel Acres, Tecumseh, Shawnee, and Earlsboro. Now, this is the polygon warning itself. Now, the polygon warning is going to be a little larger than the worst of the storm. In other words, if you could narrow it down, the worst of the storm, of course, is right about this anchored spot here, and that will move in this general direction. So you notice in the polygon, only this amount of people are going to see the largest hail. Up here, in this amount of the polygon, you're going to get some small hail and just some heavy rain. And down here, in this part of the polygon, you might get a few hailstones, but what we're watching for is to see if anything that tries to develop tornadic-wise. But that's not in, in relation to this particular polygon. This is just for the severe thunderstorm. So let's say, for example, um, you live right here. And you say, hey, my app didn't give me a warning. Well, it's because you don't live in the polygon. So a lot of times if there's, there's a storm nearby and you didn't get a warning on your app, for it is probably because you didn't live in the actual path. Now my my app, AT's Weather to Go, it'll actually alert your alert you if you are in this path. In other words, it's very specific. But it doesn't want to bother you if you're not going to see severe weather here or here. But it is going to bother the heck out of you if you live in this quadrant where you get the brunt of the worst. That includes tornadoes or hail or any damaging storms. That kind of deal. So that's how that works. Um, okay. So what else we got? Turn that off. Let's zoom in a little closer. A couple streets for you. Uh, Red Bud, um, 120, uh, 120th Avenue, Northeast. Over here we got 156 coming up. Uh, we got Stella. So all the way up to 40. I 40 up here at the top of the screen. Coming up on the County Line Road up there. All right, and that's just where the smaller hail is located. Largest hail back down here in Franklin Road again. Franklin Road's been a popular road. Okay, so let me take a look at the uh, velocity data down here, see if anything has gotten my attention. Not from that vantage point. All right. So the downdraft gust potential, when these cells do collapse, They've got a lot of energy that's held, holding them up, and so if they were to collapse in a perfect environment, we're looking at uh, wind speeds up around 70 plus miles per hour. Now we've already seen that, so this isn't out of the question. So this is the latest radar data still indicating that the wind speeds aloft that can come down with the hail is about 70 uh, miles per hour. Okay, so let's go back on here. I do a little analysis. Let's see. There is no wind there. Literally no wind. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. It's just it's a dead wind zone in this region. It's just light and variable. 
this is running into what is left over of a meso high. A meso high is like a a um, a surface feature that's stable air. It's like mini high pressure behind a cold front. Um, and usually when you get cold fronts that come through, the air behind it is followed by a high. And that high is subtle is um, subsidence, it's it's sinking air, and it's nice air. It's it's quiet, sunny, that kind of deal. Well, when you have like a big nasty squall on and just heavy rain in southeast Oklahoma, um, there's a, it ends up creating a temperature contrast and a pressure difference, and so it ends up forming a little bit of a meso high um, to the north and west of that. Well, that's where this storm is starting to run into. Now, that can go in its favor or against its favor. If it's a little more rain cooled uh, and it's really disrupted the wind field, it goes against it. If the temperatures really didn't change any at all, but that actually helped to kick up the winds a notch uh, from the southeast, then that would favor it. So it can go either way uh, in these environments. Right now, it's gone in the way that's helping us out, which is light winds, variable. Uh, temperature's not much difference, but uh, without those winds, it's a big difference. So let's see, strongest wind speeds here. What does that show me? 52 miles per hour. So those have come down a bit. So we'll try here on this vantage point. Looks like some big hailstones hit parts of the city. See some people out there getting there, looking at their cars. All right, so winds here about 52, 54, 59, so 60 mile per hour winds uh, in this area. And that is at 156 Avenue Northeast and Tecumseh Road. So that's where the strongest winds are currently and some packet north and east of there and then some a little south and west of there. That's the strongest wind at this point in time. And the reflectivity continues to come down, which means it's probably dropped a lot of its hail already. So let's take a look at that. Let's see here. I'm going to have to go back to another radar. All right, we're going to let that one load. The tornado tag is being taken off the warning now. That's because nothing's happened since it's gone into that environment. And that little inflow we saw down here has kind of disappeared. So that's good. You have to excuse me if I lean over to do this. <laughs> I'm having a, I'm having a sinus infection attack today for some reason. I'm trying not to take it. Uh, okay, so here's, let's see, newest data just came in, it's downloading. There we go. Okay, need this update. All right. So that reports um, a one inch size hail uh, that came out of that particular spot. There's a little curly cue right here. Mm. Mm. There is a little um, little spin to this. It's not anything that I would call a trail, just so you know, but it's some type of little eddy of uh, Vorticity Center. It's on East Tecumseh Road and uh, 156th Avenue Northeast. So you might see a, a low lowering cloud slightly rotating. You can get what we kind of call a QLCS type tornado out of that, even though this isn't technically a squall line. It's more of a linear hybrid supercell so it's, things can happen I guess um, sure why not so keep an eye on that little guy uh, but behind it is where the big hail is located so this thing continues to move east so if you live along east it comes to road uh, you'd be in the path if this turned into something all right let's take a look at this guy says oh let's see <laughs> I think. Okay. Big Jim Road. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the other one. I gotta go back and forth the different little radar views. The largest hailstones in this purple zone, and that is gonna be bounded by Let's see, East Indian Hills, Franklin, Tecumseh, Rock Creek, and Highway 9, 
right up along 168th Avenue Northeast, and then just about to come up now on, uh, looks like Austin or Dobbs Road, South Dobbs Road. So that is the next hailed core to fall. They did get some baseball size hail in parts of Norman it looks like. Golf ball and baseballs. All right, anything else with this? Nope, downloading new data. Let that come in. So we have another one of those little curly things, which again, there's nothing to worry about at this point in time. Just um, looking for something, trouble. See if anything's brewing. Uh, let's see, what are these winds doing now? Just up around 60, 65. This is just uh, along and north of Highway 9. Uh, this is coming into pink. So there's a spot of 70. There's 77 miles per hour. Um, so that's some pretty good damaging winds on this little spot now. Uh, and that's coming in with the hail. So I'm probably just going to hang this just another couple minutes and then um, once this batch of hail comes down that may be the end of it, which then in that case it just comes starts to turn into the garden variety thunderstorm uh, with marginally severe hail. So it looks like that's probably going to be what's going to happen with this guy and that would jive with the uh, short term forecast radar that we saw earlier, uh, which had it weakening once it got east of the split used to tinker. All right, so a couple of radars went down tonight with some lightning strikes or something, it looks like. So I'm trying to uh, find, get another one up and running that's a little bit better. Uh, let's see here. So pink, you're about to get the uh, big size of this hail. Let me see if it has an accurate estimated hail size update out of this. That did not update. Okay. All right. Go back to wind. And that's where it still looks like God. Uh, oh man, that's at 86 miles per hour. Good grief. So that's the strongest I've seen. 86 mile per hour winds. Again, that's the size of a small tornado. So that's going to do some damage. This is currently over 192nd Avenue Northeast and Tecumseh between there and Franklin. That's on the County Line Road now and then we'll be up around uh, North South Road 330 and Highway 9 in pink. So if that strong wind holds together, it'll be coming in that vicinity next. Typically, you don't get that kind of wind that holds that long. There's Hunter's Bluff Trail, Cornell Drive. You guys all got straight line winds tonight. Your fence is all blew down. Wolf Drive, Wood Hollow, Sky Ridge. So you'll have a mess to clean up out there. Probably sounded horrific for the noise. Um, those straight line winds can kind of sound like a freight train too, too when people describe you know the sound of a tornado. So what you're hearing is just the loud wind roar with it. All right. So, that's going to be a, a, a deal, that's for sure. Okay, let's go back here to this guy. And, what's the time? So this pink area here, that's where those 80, uh, 80 mile per hour winds are, where it kind of turns over to orange right here. So this right now is a Attention. shrinking hail event, but a straight line 
whirlwind event. Moderate mucosal cell detected. Severe hail detected. Let's do this. Okay. So this particular storm, uh, it's interesting. So it peaked in intensity. It's a DBZ value up around 70, and then it falls. So it weakens down to 61, and now it's rebuilding a little bit. And then you've got the hail went up with the build, and it went back down, and echo tops went down. So this might be some garbled data here. Let me see here. Meso depth increased a little bit that's just the mid level rotation of the storm so this is a 10,000 feet this lower line um, so it's uh, from about 15,000 feet to 35,000 feet as the storm itself is just uh, rotating and that's what helps to give you that big hail all right so that was pink Bethel Acres Tecumseh Shawnee Johnson and Earlsboro all during the next 25 minutes uh, for Again, the brunt of this is going to be hail and wind currently. Now, at some point, it's going to have to drop its whole whole load, and it could be doing that right now unless it recycles. All right. I'll ignore that 121. That's just an artifact. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's in the 60s all around it. So that's really strong. It looks like it's come down some. Uh, north of pink though, there's a new spot up here close to 80. Yep, there it is, 80 miles per hour. That's two miles north of pink. So pink proper, both north, south, east, and west, you're going to have a batch of wind come through close to 80 miles an hour. So you're going to get a little bit of hail out of that. Uh, so this is our storm with the damaging wind associated with it. It's even get a little bit, uh, getting a little bit more of a microburst look to it. So what happens is, this is the radar view over here, okay? You have winds that are blowing away from the radar in pink, and you have winds that are coming toward the radar in blue. So what does that tell you? That means right here, D for divergent. So it's a divergent pattern. So a divergent pattern is like a microburst type pattern. You've got winds going in both directions, uh, and it also typically means that the storm is collapsing and dropping most of its wind now. Now that would make sense since we did see some peaks around 80 miles per hour. We had not seen that all night. So this might be the case then we're getting a, a developing microburst and that's what's causing most of this to happen currently over pink and just west of there, north of there. And then it won't last much longer and then it will gradually weaken and weaken and weaken. So that's what it looks like right now with that display. Okay, gotta do something here real quick. So first thing, just thanks for tuning on AT's weather, by the way. Uh, appreciate you. So I kind of watching these storms all day and just to see if um, anything was get out of control. And for the most part, everything behaved, um, which was great. And then, um, <laughs> and then we had this one guy. He just wouldn't die, man. He's out there in western Oklahoma just trucking along, doing nothing, minding his own business. He's kind of slowly kept growing and growing. And then now he is here um, on the east, southeast side of the metro and still got some wind with it. Okay, so let me see here what I can do for you on this. Let's do a cross section right through the core. And let's see what she's made of. All right. So we still have surface cores dropped there. But if I go up back a bit in the storm, there's still an elevated core around 10, 8, uh, 5, 10, 15,000 feet. So that's this elevated course is a vertical level you're looking at. So this is from about 5,000 feet here, and this goes up to 10, and that's 15. So that means this still has to come down. So the large hail is not finished by any means. Now the wind, however, for the most part right now, looks like that has finished. I don't see anything else upstairs right now to reload so that's good. This temporary break in the wind should occur at the surface. All right. 
So it has not done anything with the um, intersection of the residual frontal boundary that's still hanging around down here. There's just not enough convergence, I don't think, along it or enough of a um, structure to it, which is great. Had that front been different, been more of a solid line, that would have been a different story. Uh, so we're going to see if it keeps its own. If I had to go back in time, it's shrunk in size a little bit. Uh, the tail end of it's also shrunk and gotten weaker. And the top end's gotten weaker. We just have just this main core. So I still think this thing's weakening. It's on a weakening trend. Uh, it may take a little while longer, but it's on a, a significant weakening trend than it was before. And right now, again, all the, the main hail is up here just north of Pink on Walker Road that runs north and south uh, to Highway 9 and then stops at about uh, Clear Pond Road. So that's your boundary for the hailstones. Probably of a trend is only 6%. That's the highest thing has been this whole time. And that's not saying much. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I see nothing else in the wind. Hell algorithms have come down um, not to that cell point though. Yeah, here we go, 1.7. Uh, and this one's got, got two. So it still has some potential two inch size hailstones out of this bad boy uh, between Bethel Acres and Pink. It'll be coming up here on Stevens Road here momentarily. This is kind of just running right along Highway 9. So the worst is just about a mile north of 9. And then from that point, another two miles north. So from one to three miles north of 9 is where the run of this hail core is going, along with the winds with it. Now, it looks like the winds, other than this one spot, have come down. It's only 70 miles per hour. The rest of these are around 60 to 70. So it's a little bit of a magnitude drop. We'll see if it drops again next scan the next update. All right. So pink here in the next just, well, it's already been moving through. This is the back end of it actually. So what I need to do is do a new track and make my own arrow. So the latest update motion is east at 35. So we're gonna have to make a new one. I'm gonna track where the biggest hail and the strongest part of the storm is. Uh, east at 35. All right, so the new timeline then is Bethel Acres at 941, Shawnee at 950, and Earlsboro at 1002. And that's for this lone supercell storm that just won't quit. No, it's coming right up along 102. So State Highway 102 running north and south is about to get the hail core. And that's running from around Clear Pond Road. Um, I'm sure it's our old buddy Franklin probably goes out here. Let's take a zoom in and look. So it's east, at this time it changes name. So it's east rest uh, 119th and 118 and Clear Pond Road. So that's it. South Road it would be, it's not going to show up is it? 
Nope. But then there's Highway 9 in the south from there. So uh, the worst of this will pass. Again, assuming it holds together as it is, the worst of it will pass on the south side of Shawnee and the north side of Tecumseh. So it's going to go right between the two of you. So each one of you will get just a glancing blow. Alright, so this is the severe hail track when it started. So when I started the cut in, it was just about here at the back end, the purple, uh, north of Blanchard. So that's where it was dropping the extremely large hail. Um, we had two to two and a half, and I think two and three quarter inch hailstones down here. So this isn't going, this is going to underestimate the size. So it's going to be incorrect. So we did get stones closer to three inches. So it won't underestimate by too much, but at least enough. But here is the overall swath, um, and that's the key takeaway here. From around just the north side of Blantry right up to Newcastle, and then between Norman and uh, Moore, the northern fringe of the hail was Wind uh, West Indian Hills Road, uh, and then the southern end of the big hail was, uh, let's see, is that Lindsay Street? Yeah, looks like Lindsay Street. Or Highland Hills uh, out of Norman. Um, and then once you get a little more east from there, it kind of parallels Highway 9, but it's always about a mile or two north of it. And then the northern fringe of this hail core, 164th Street. Um, so that's where that was. Uh, let's see what else we can track here. Anything else? That's probably pretty good. There hadn't been a lot of shear or anything with this to track, but the hail is a pretty good. Uh, historical view. All right, now as you can see across the region, that's the only storm on the game in town. There's one down here, uh, east of Lawton, it's no big deal. And there's a few more crawling in from Texas, no big deal down there. Uh, Eastern Oklahoma, we had a tornado warning uh, for a while there in the far eastern area of the state that's now moved into Arkansas. So our tornado warning continues out here. Let's see where this is at. So Fort Smith, let's just take a quick look. Well, that's loading. We'll go back and look here. So the wind at Bethel Acres, let's see the max I've got now is 62 miles per hour. So I got 50, 60 to 62. All right, so good. So my prediction had continues to uh, take shape. And that is the winds continue to come down. Hail size still some purple, so there's still some cores, um, but it's not nearly as brutal looking as it was prior. So maybe that trend is going down too. We'll do a look at that here in a second. All right, let me go over here to Fort Smith, Arkansas. So this is a clustered mess. When you get a lot of these rain embedded um, with the circulations within them, I mean, just looking at reflectivity, you're like, okay, so what am I looking at, right? <laughs> so you have to go to velocity data. Try to pick these problem areas out. All right, you're going to show up for me? You can do it. I know you can. You can do it. So this is over here in Arkansas, by the way. It, the warning should have cleared, the potential tornado should have cleared uh, the uh, Oklahoma border. Um, if I can get uh, some data to come out of this radar up here in and Little Rock will be all right, but uh, it doesn't want to work. All 
not, let's tour, try something different. So let's do this. <sighs> There's still this little generic appendage looking figure down here. So still worth keeping an eye on just for another few more minutes. Hadn't done anything yet in that environment and it's running out of time, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so let me go over here to uh, what's happening. Yeah, that one trade warning expire. That's what I thought. So this is deeper in Arkansas. They did finally get a tornado out of it though. There is a um, report of one from Storm Chasers. So let's take a look at that. Let's put this back. All right. Oh, I think that radar is having some trouble. <laughs> I think it really is. Man. Yeah, it's not good because if the uh, the next rad radar goes down for any reason, and that's what the National Weather Service uses to make warnings. And so, if the radar is having some data outage issues or whatever it may be, that's that's never a good sign. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, this particular tornado, tornado. Let's see what was the reports on this. Uh, it was on Highway 10 at one point. Uh, there may have been two separate tornadoes, I believe. I think that may have been an old one. And this is a new one down here because this one you can't see. This is this is gonna be rain wrapped and it is still gonna be on Highway 10 though. So maybe that guy somehow saw it from the backside and got a quick view of it. So this is where the uh, if it was still on the ground, uh, there's not a great velocity signature here, but it's enough of one. So there's the new updated track from the Weather Service. That's where this little yellow line starts. Uh, now it's it actually moved more like this than it did more like this. So they may have to adjust the track, but for now that's where it's located. It's uh, northwest of Washburn by about six miles. Um, let's see. So if you live in this particular path, let's see, what's the probability of a tornado on this one? 91%. So the algorithms predicted that at 91% of producing a tornado. Uh, that's going to be in Burnville moving east at 20. Uh, let's see what else they got in here. Mashburn, Milton, and Burnsville all in the towns in the path of the storm. So again, not everybody will see this train. It's a very small one, um, but you will definitely get the thunderstorm that's causing it or producing it. Uh, let's see, let's update this. All right, so let me see where this is at actually. This is over some farmland, literally, uh, looks like some greenhouses. Uh, let's see, so we've got in this track a lot of trees, so it's not in any major metropolitan area here in uh, western Arkansas, so that's great news. Uh, there might be a couple of farmhouses in this path, none of them stood out because this is passing north of Washburn. But go ahead and be in your shelters though if you live here in western Arkansas in that area because that is where the uh, track thunderstorm resides and that will continue to work its way through into central Arkansas from there. Okay, so let's go back into Oklahoma and the latest on our guy. Let's see if anything's changed. Okay. Uh, okay, so The outlay of this is coming in like this, comes in, and it comes in like this. This is the developing hook part of it. Now what comes out of this hook is an inflow notch here for moisture that feeds in, kind of pulls into it. So it does have an inflow region, still trying to pull in this air um, here. There's no enhanced reflectivity that I see like for residual boundary to ingest, which is good. Um, so we'll see what happens, if anything, with that area. But again, that's on um, moving into Tecumseh. The hail part moving in from the 
south end of Shawnee for the bigger hail, um, then a couple miles south of town. So let's go in to do that as well. Let's switch sites again. There was some big hailstones south in Oklahoma City earlier and Norman. Guys in Newcastle and Blanchard. And, man, big hailstorms. Okay, uh, let's see. Anything else going on with this guy? No. Let's see something else. Okay. Not updated. There it goes. So if you live in Shawnee on the west side of town, you're obviously you're going to hear a lot of lightning, but you're also going to hear some loud thumps. This is on East Road 116 and Acme Road coming into Leo Street and then one, uh, 270 here all in the next scan, so all for the next few, uh, minute or so. Then it'll move through Shawnee itself. So earlier I had the largest hailstones falling south of Shawnee, and it looks like they already dropped their load in this area here because now the hail that's falling isn't nearly as strong as it was earlier. So it's dropped its largest load here, so that spared the south end of Shawnee. So now, unfortunately, it makes the northern side of Shawnee seem the largest hail because the largest of the large hail is already fallen. So now you're stuck with this as it moves through the northern side from downtown up toward 270, where the split is for the business. Uh, let's see here. So 61, 63 dBZ. Yep. We'll see if it gives me any other data to look at here. Wind speed, 60 miles per hour. So that'll happen through the southern half of Shawnee. The northern half, the hail. The southern half, the wind up around 60. And then if we look at, uh, let's see, we got some hail sizes on here. We'll just see what the radar is estimating. Only an inch in diameter. I don't know if I trust that though from the history. Historical perspective has been um, larger than that. These are just algorithms of guesstimates. I think they're under guesstimating here a little bit. All right, so bigger winds now moving through um, Shawnee now and on the west side, southwest side of town, it's around 60 miles per hour. Uh, a lot of pink on the map here, which indicates close to around 60 in some of these um, moving due south from there on uh, 177, 270. All right, let's see about the hail again. So the hail dropped its load for the most part on the northwest side of town and still is doing so, but it's lessening with time. So that means most of the hail will fall on the west side of the north side. So in other words, the northwestern quadrant. Uh, so if you split Shawnee like this, for example, um, the, hail, the biggest hailstones are now in this area. The biggest wind is down this area. And then this area, we'll get whatever's left over of both of those, which should be a smaller magnitude. Probability of a tornado only 1%, hail 32, wind 27. So the algorithms continue to shrink this bad boy down as a nothing burger, um, each continued successive uh, sweep. All right, so let's see. This pink area on the southeast side of Shawnee looks like 62 miles per hour. Um, so that's the strongest winds, and that's running right along uh, East Bentley Street. So that's, that's where that's going to be, southeast side of town. Um, and then that's it. That's the strongest wind there. Uh, then it gets weaker from that point. North side looks like up around 50 uh, mile per hour winds. All right, let's go back to the base velocity, or excuse me, base reflectivity. So you got a nice kidney bean shape to the storm. So the storm structure still looks decent, but its strength overall 
has changed considerably. So let me look upstairs. I'm going to cut this thing in half. It's still carrying a lot of hell aloft. It's not done. That is impressive. So it's dropping a lot of its load now, but it still has some in reserves. Not like it did before, but still significant. So it's just reorganizing. It's not necessarily dying. Um, part of it may have died, but the other part's getting going. Now, it is weaker considerably compared to what it was when it was over Oklahoma City. Don't get me wrong. But in its newest trends, it's undergoing some mesomorphosis. If I get quiet, so there's nothing new to add, I just be repeating myself. Yeah. Every now and then I stop to think. So that heavy storm in Shawnee continues to push through. It's on the east side, so it's almost over. A few more minutes, and you guys will be out of the out of the woods. Johnson's on the north end of the hail and the heavy rainfall, so you're you're getting just a normal thunderstorm for this time of the year. Nothing too crazy. Uh, back out, still got those storms in uh, western Arkansas, still going to town. And uh, this one here in Shawnee, just kind of watching, just another couple more minutes. Um, so far, I'm just not seeing anything that has me too concerned. So, let me look at this. So, this Mesonet report has a wind of gusting to six miles per hour. So there's just no inflow of the surface for this storm to feed on. And that's not going to get a tornado. Um, fine by me. And the boundary itself, like we talked about, is kind of so washed out, there's no strong vorticity gradient to pick up and an ingest in the updraft, so that's good too. So all in all, it's really good. So um, I know there was a talk a week ago of a, a, a severe weather outbreak that was supposed to happen yesterday. That didn't happen, and it didn't happen here today either. So when you hear talk like that a week out, just ignore it, please. And don't message me and go, well, look what they're saying. Look what so-and-so is saying. Do you believe this? Do you, do you agree with this? Is this what you think? Trust me. If, you, if I'm going to say it, you're going to hear me say it. <laughs> and I'm not going to do it a week out. <laughs> so 
I don't talk about that kind of stuff until about 48 hours out because prior to that, no way. No way. You can fall on your face like everybody did at the TV stations. Uh, let's see here. And the problem is if one does it, they all have to do it. <laughs> so it's like whoever's first, then the other ones have to follow. It's so ridiculous. The, the expression at, um, at Channel 5 was uh, first on, last off. <laughs> so you had to be the exact first, and you had to keep talking until the other guys gave up. And it was basically an MMA fight of making your com competition tap out. You could have absolutely nothing to say. And the storm's dead or a donut, but you're not going to quit until they do. And so you make them do it first. It was the stupidest game I could have ever thought of playing. Um, and that was not a voluntarily game to play. It's just dumb. Dumb policies. But whatever. It's not my problem. I don't work there anymore. <laughs> it's their problem now. <laughs> But uh, oh, it's so much better being on this other side of the, of the TV monitor. You guys have no idea. Uh, I liked what I did up there. It's like helping people, like doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's just everything else that went along with it. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. If I wanted to keep my sanity, I had to get out of that clown show. And I do mean clown show. So it's a rough industry, man, trust me. And there's a lot of interesting people in that industry, but it's a rough industry. Okay, let's see. So that, that storm is doing what I said it was doing, which is nothing compared to what it was. It was through Oklahoma City. Uh, it's still going through some recycling. So it still has some hail aloft in it that's going to eventually come down. Uh, let's see. Is this uh, give me an update? Let's try this out. Yeah, there won't be any pass, though. It's, it's going into no man's land for towns. It's going pretty much right along the interstate. 40 and coming up on 377 here in the next 10 minutes. It's about 10 miles away from there. So just keep trucking along. Uh, probably, yeah, probably just kind of parallel on 40. Now, it should eventually die. Let's go take a look at our fancy computer model forecast. And let's see what it's done. Let's refresh it, give it a chance to get updated with the latest. And get off of there. It keeps it going for a little while longer. Look at that, it changed its mind. Okay, so as it moving past Shawnee, uh, there's Seminole County that it's got it coming and dying before, really dying before it gets to Okfusky, uh, and before it even gets to South Tulsa. So it's kind of got it more moving to a northeastward fashion now for the rest of its life cycle, but um, we'll see. Big storms down here in Texas, by the way. San Antonio and parts west got rocked. Dallas got rocked. Big storms west and uh, West Central Texas as well. So there was a few storms around that got carried away. Big hail, that kind of stuff. Uh, potential tornadoes. All right. So this guy is really dead. I got to go upstairs and look because downstairs has got me bored. All right. It's got one core left, one hail core left that's sustained. Um, and this is some big hail. It'll eventually come down, but we don't have multiple cores anymore. It's just this one. Um, it's still significant, which is still surprising to me this late in the evening. Uh, let's see, we're at 30,000 feet, so it's still technically a low-top supercell structure on it. It's going to go for a while. This core has to come down for it to die, and it's still being lofted up. So even though they'll be undergoing a recycling at the surface where it's a little weaker, the upper level tail, the upper levels tell me a different story. So it's helpful to use little three-dimensional views just um, for my sake. You guys probably just look at it and go, that's really cool. Whereas when I do it, I gotta look for different things that sometimes I get quiet because I gotta think. <laughs> but uh, sometimes I can point stuff out to you, other times I can't. It's a, it's for me to visualize the storm as I was out there storm chasing and looking at it. Um, it's a great representation of that. So uh, I can picture some things in my mind when I do that. All right, winds have really come down. They're not even worth discussing at this point in time. Still no rotation. Uh, there is still some hail we talked about. That's still going to come down, but the pocket keeps shrinking. It's over... It's over a two mile wide area versus a four or five or six mile wide area, which it was in its past. 
So the the uh, trend continues to shrink in. Let's see. What does this tell me? Hill sizes of about an inch and a half in diameter currently. Of course, that's not what's upstairs. Upstairs is still pretty big. Okay, so I'm gonna focus your attention in here. We'll do a little uh, weather classroom exercise. All right, so this is the base reflectivity. All right, so this is the power, raw, raw power returned to the radar. And the stronger we turn, the higher the DBZ values. And the DBZ values here around 60 to 65. That's, that's indicative of hail, sometimes a very large hail. So what else can we look at? Well, we can look at the cross-correlation coefficient. This is where it measures um, the irregular, irregularities in the path of the radar beam. So if it's droplets that are spherical, or if it's hail that's got jagged edges, or if it's uh, debris that kind of just separates it all. So the more things that are more jagged and doesn't make sense, the higher the number it gives it um, toward the negative. So you have to think backwards. So it ends up going like a 0 0.7 to 8 correlation. Well, that's what you get here in these uh, yellow and green areas. So what does that tell me? It tells me that it's got hail in that spot. Uh, you can also look at ZDR, and ZDR will also give you a value, and if it's down here around in the blue and, gold, and the gray right here, which is getting close to zero, um, and then partially negative, that also indicates some large hail. So when you combine those two together, you can sometimes, um, if, if they're just right, you can get about two inch size hail out of that, so, or bigger, uh, especially or bigger. And this one's gonna be right on that borderline, I think. There may be a two inch stone in there, but I think most of it's probably about golf ball size uh, in this area. But um, that's just kind of how I can look at different radar products and then figure out, uh, you know, what's inside a storm. So when I do, when I do this kind of stuff for uh, uh, meteorological consultations for law firms or engineering firms or clients for whatever, um, you know, insurance, I go back and I do past analysis like this and I'll look at all these different products and I can uh, figure out the uh, hails, the size that occurred, you know, at that, that event. Uh, putting all the pieces together. All right, so this hail is on Crossland Road, by the way, this core. Uh, let's see, and that's that runs right along 40. So this is Crossland Road and I-40. That's where the biggest hail is, and I think there's a, is that a county? It's Valley View Road, east of there. Um, so that'll be um, some hail there. And then finally, what do we got here? Uh, Eckletonk, oh, okay. Uh, Econ Chukta, Econ Tuchka Road. It's the first time I've ever seen, seen that road. Econ Tuchka Road is the next, and I'm sure I butchered that, but it's an Indian road, obviously. Um, and I don't... I need to work on my uh, <laughs> pronunciation. Native American uh, language. So I'm part Cherokee, but I didn't learn any Cherokee. So... Um, but let's see... Trying to see if there's anything else to talk about. I'm, I'm kind of struggling here. I normally don't just cover storms that are just they're garden variety, you know, wind and hail. And this one was a um, high end event, so I went ahead and covered it. Plus, it had the potential of producing a tornado once it crossed that boundary. So now that I've covered the high end part of it and I crossed the part where it was crossing over the boundary zone and it wasn't doing anything, now I'm just kind of in the watching it slowly die phase. So I think I'm going to let this one go. Doesn't have a seem to have a threat of uh, anything traumatic anytime soon, and like I said most of the hail keeps shrinking in size and uh, geographical spacing, so it means it's getting smaller and smaller, which is what the um, high res model suggested would happen, which is pretty good. So that's a it's a new research um, platform they're using where it takes sorry um, I don't know that one. It takes storms out there currently on the radar, runs through a short term high range. Um, High resolution model that forecasts out for I think it's up to three hours and in that it'll forecast all different types of things that uh, processes that happen in a storm to try to predict if it'll grow into a supercell if it'll strengthen or if it'll weaken taking in all the current latest conditions environmental factors so it's really cool so it's still in experimental phase and I think this is the second year it's been put to use at least that we can see in the public side it may have been a prior year prior for all the behind the scenes for tweaking and working it, of course. But uh, we'll see how it does. We haven't had many systems to test it with, so we'll have to 
we'll see. But um, all right, so that was the that was the coverage. I did not look at the forecast because I was busy with this. We can do that real quick for those folks that are still hanging in there. And then I'm gonna call this. Will be my. I wonder if I should just do another forecast later. Oh, what should I do? Because there's not really much gonna happen other than what you already know, which is storms tonight. Uh, and then things quiet down for tomorrow. Let me um, let me get the latest data here. Okay, so here's HRR. So this stuff moves off in the southeast Oklahoma overnight toward midnight, and then they get a little bit more overnight. Midnight kind of keeps raining through Thursday in far southeast Oklahoma. All right, the rest of the body of the state's quiet, dry. Um, precipitation for this entire period. Let's take a look at that. In addition to what's already fallen, that's kind of how you look at it. So there's going to be some stretches here. Where like, for example, uh, the model tried to take the supercell and move through the south of the metro and dump about an inch and a half of rain with it. So it'll try to take those strong cells and dump stronger streaks of, streaks of rain with it. But overall, you can see southeastern um, third of Oklahoma is continuing to get the uh, inundated with the uh, higher amounts. Uh, so some brief flash flooding likely still a potential down there. Temperature-wise, tomorrow, let's take a look. In the afternoon, ah, low 70s. Upper 60s, low 70s. Oh, that's pretty decent. All right, that tells me there's still going to be some clouds, though, that kind of hang in tight. Um, from what I just saw there. Let me go through time into the next one. We're back in the 70s for Friday. So good couple of days going up as far as temperatures are concerned. Cloud cover, let's check this out. It looks like there's going to be some clouds hanging around. So here's 8 o'clock in the morning. There's two, one, two, three. Yeah, so southeast Oklahoma, you just, you're just going to stay in the cloud cover. The rest of us are going to get some sunshine. So all this blue down here is all clouds, and then up here is just uh, clear skies. All right, so that was uh, rainfall totals, sky conditions. The wind should be fairly light. Let's take a look at that. Now, they probably picked up a little behind the front now. Um, but they shall die down. Let's see. There's three, four, seven. They pick back up tomorrow morning. There's nine o'clock in the morning. They're up around. Eh, there's 20 gusts to 25 miles per hour out in western Oklahoma. So the, tomorrow will actually be a little breezy over western Oklahoma and nice in central. Not not bad at all. 10 to 20 uh, for the most part. But uh, definitely gusts higher than that out west. And that's for Thursday. And then Friday looks like it's just calm out there everywhere. Oh, Friday's a great day. Excellent. All right, now beyond that, I did not look to scour how the you know your seven day looks as far as the next storm systems. The pattern, what are we now? The end of the month of April. So it was a little little bump in the road between the end of April and the beginning of May. And then it gets quiet again, and then it should ramp back up again toward the middle of May. So long term, that's how that looks. But uh, there you go. But thanks again for watching, tuning in, sharing, supporting, all that kind of stuff. Um, the Facebook stars, the YouTube love, all of it. So I do appreciate that that you can do uh, to get the word out. So I I've done all of this organically. So in other words, this is just all word of mouth. And I've done this since 2000. I think covering live like this since 2014. Um, before that... For a couple of years, I'd storm chase and do a live storm chase or whatever. But changing roles from storm chasing to just being here running radar and warning people, that's been since 2014. Each year I've done it better and better because I've figured out more things and added more things and learned more things along the way. So it's a growing um, process. But uh, I was one of the first pioneers to do this. <laughs> so it was a lot to learn on my own that wasn't out there. Uh, but then there's a lot of people that have since um, started to do weather online. And I think that's that's good for the most part. You guys have to be really careful on who you follow. Um, there's a lot of guys out there that pretend to be meteorologists. There's a lot of guys that are just, they're out there to make a buck. And, you know, they've got no accreditation or affiliation or anything like that. So it's hard for you to decide who that's going to be. And that's the that's the kicker, man. That's you know, you know how a con artist knows how to work a con, and there are certain things in life that are really easy cons. Um, this is one of those. <laughs> I'm telling you, 
Um, anyone can do a Facebook page and claim that they're an expert or whatever, and they can go and copy and paste everybody else's. There's someone here in Oklahoma City that does that for mine. In the early days, he'd ask me all these questions. I'm like, why are you asking me so many questions? Then he'd go and post them on his page as though he did the forecast. <laughs> so when I found that out, I had a boot him, gave him a little lip service, and I gave him the boot. Um, so there's some there's some nut jobs out there, man, and they, they do. I don't know what's in it for them. I do this for my heart. I don't do it for whatever these sick people are doing it for. Um, if I don't get paid, I don't get paid. I never did this to get paid anyway. So when you guys give me uh, little gifts from the stars and whatever, that's awesome. So um, there's an expression, beggars, <laughs> don't be choosers, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'll take anything I can get just to help fund all this stuff because it's expensive. So, But that's just kind of how I got started uh, and back in, in that time era and then had to build all this stuff from scratch. And me, <laughs> I'm cheap. <laughs> I did it all myself, <laughs> everything. Uh, so it's been a learning experience, but uh, I got a lot of knowledge up there now. Uh, let's see here. I'm just looking at this radar while I'm talking to you, just making sure anything didn't change or do something while I was yakking. Um, but it didn't. It just keeps on shrinking. All right. So listen, I got to get out of here. Um, you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching. I don't plan on doing any severe weather cut-ins anytime soon. Um, so it's going to be several days for that. Uh, but uh, I do expect to give you another weather update. And we'll probably do that over the weekend. I, I tend to write the blogs on Sunday. And I try to write it where it's good for an entire week. So I give you the big picture and things to watch for. And then for the daily minutia. I tell you to download my weather app, AT's Weather to Go, and it gives you your daily winds, highs, lows, clouds, you know, that kind of deal. So you want to use the app for your daily thing that way. It, it loads up in just a few seconds, and then you get exactly what you need. You don't have to wait and watch a broadcast for three minutes or watch me, you know, for 15 minutes, whatever you want. If you just want just the standard stuff. Um, but when you want to come to the big deal, big stories, um, tune in for that, and I explain it to you with a lot more of the uh, classroom type um, exercises to kind of help you understand what's going on and that helps reduce your anxiety and helps you understand more of what goes on in the atmosphere so it's a little little neat trick I do here but uh, I like it I think it's fun all right so I'm looking at this storm one more time one of those deals is just gotta keep watching it could do it it could do it <laughs> it's the part it's the part of me is going don't give up yet but uh, I'm giving up so I, I gotta get out of here all right you guys have a great night again and we'll talk again soon